Good morning. Good morning. My name is LaFonda Sutton Burke, and I'm here to provide you with a brief presentation about my great great grandfather, Green Gunner. All of the research, the interviews, and ultimately a book entitled Joyously Proclaiming Our Roots Gunner Family History was developed by my third cousin, Anastasia Rhodes Butler. She also is the great great granddaughter of Green Gunner. And my presence here today was initiated by my daughter Sequoia, who had requested that I help her develop her family tree for a class project. Green Gunner was born in Virginia in 1847 and was the son of Isaac and Fanny Gunter. It is assumed that Green was born into slavery along with his siblings, of which only two can be verified, Easter Gunner and Wyatt Tuggle. Records indicate that Green Gunner and the Gunter children were residents of North Carolina by 1864. At some point between Green Gunter's birth in Virginia in 1847 and pre-Civil War 1864, Green and his siblings were either moved with their slave owners or were sold to plantations in Stokes County and Surrey County, North Carolina. Wyatt Tuggle, brother of Green, may have been a slave on the Strickland Plantation. Wyatt married a former slave, Carolyn Banner, who came from the Banner Plantation. It is possible that some of the Gunters were Banner slaves. Slave records for the Gunner family are still being investigated. On April 12, 1861, the Civil War began with North Carolina and Virginia being among the 11 states that succeeded from the Union. Records indicate that both Green and perhaps his father Isaac served in the Civil War as part of the United States Colored Troops. Records indicate that Isaac served in the 2nd U.S. Colored Cavalry, the Green's father, awaiting, awaiting an examination of those military records to confirm. Green enlisted, enlisted on May 11, 1865, as a Union private to the 119th Infantry, Company K, at Camp Nelson, Kentucky. His brigade performed various duties in the state of Kentucky until the unit mustered out April 27, 1866. The Conscriptive Act of February 1864 allowed all able-bodied slaves and free blacks to enlist and this had a major impact on Camp Nelson. By August 1864, 2,000 black enrollees were at the camp. By the end of 1865, about 10,000 men, or 40% of Kentucky African American soldiers, had passed through Camp Nelson, making it the most important recruitment center for African Americans in Kentucky. We assume that Green entered the war at the end due to the fact that both North Carolina and Virginia were slave states and part of the Confederacy. In order for he and his father to enlist into the army, they had to either become fugitives, escape from their plantations, or been provided freedom from their owners. This may have been the case because the conscriptive act Allowed for, allowed for loyal slave owners to be compensated for their slaves that enlisted. On January 8, 1866, while serving 
in the U.S. Colored Troop at Camp Nelson, Kentucky. Green opened a savings account with $50 at the Freedman Bank in Lexington, Kentucky. Green provided the following information on his bank account application. Father Isaac, description 5'7", black, small scar on forehead, current resident of North Carolina, military, company K, 119th USC HQ. Kemp Nelson, a fortified union supply depot, recruitment center, and African American refugee, refugee camp in central Kentucky. It was important quartermaster and commissary depot, recruitment center, and hospital facility located in Jessamine County, Kentucky. It was the largest depot and permanent encampment in Kentucky outside of Louisville and Served, a critical, served as critical function to the Union war effort by, by providing supplies, livestock, and troops for the Army of the Ohio. Besides its general everyday supply functions, Camp Nelson was also critical in the support of a number of offensive campaigns into Tennessee and Virginia. However, as stated previously, the greatest national significance of Camp Nelson was as one of the largest recruitment camps for African American troops. Eight regiments of U.S. colored troops, as the African American regiments were designated, were founded at Camp Nelson, and three others were trained there. A refugee camp for these soldiers' families was also established within Camp Nelson. The units performed a variety of duties throughout the war, including garrison duty in Kentucky and Tennessee, protecting railroad bridges in Kentucky and Tennessee, and participating in a number of skirmishes, battles, and campaigns. After the war, Green married Mary Magdalene Dodd. She was born about 1845 in North Carolina. Uh, they married between April 1866 and October or November 1866. Much of the information gathered on the Gunner family came from the 10 year census report and are not an accurate accounting of information on our people because census collections were done in person by white males and many people, particularly those of African descent, did not always provide the census takers with correct information because of lack of trust and as a result of the institution of slavery. They did not know their birth years or where their parents were born. Green and Mary did not read nor write. The ages of the Gunter family members were obtained by tracking ages from census report to census report and verifying ages with social security applications and other governmental information. So after the war, we see that Green and Mary had approximately 16 children total, 13 survived by 1900s. The 1870 census year. Five years after the end of the Civil War, we find Green, wife Mary, and their two children listed in the 1870 Stokes County Quaker Gap Township census reports, records. Occupation listed as a farm laborer. Laura is listed as three years old and Flora as one year old. There is a 60 year old gentleman by the last name of Rob living with Green and Mary. We think that the census takers could have meant Dodd, which is Mary's maiden name. The 1880 census year. 
Green and family migrate to Surrey County sometimes after 1880. Green and Mary were in their 30s and were still residing in Quaker Gap, Stokes County, North Carolina, as farmers. However, their family had grown. Laura, 11, listed as a, a farm laborer. Laura, 9. Sandy, listed on the census report as 16, but it should have been 6 years of age. Andrew, 5. Fanny, 3. Joseph, age 1. And Joseph is my great-grandfather. Ida 18, Etta 17, John 15, James 14, Ella 12, Edgar 10, Jesse 8, Mary 4, Easter 80 years of age, born in Virginia. This is listed as the sister to Green Gunner. And then Emma Gunner, 1 years of age, listed as a granddaughter to Green. And we don't have the records of whose child she was. and. What we're thinking is that she probably was the daughter of one of the sons, and uh, she remained in North Carolina after the, the migration uh, to Oklahoma. Oklahoma was the place to be in order to be part of the great Oklahoma land rush. Participants arrived in Oklahoma, and at the shot of the gun, raced off to stake their land. The land rush of 1889 was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If you were white, as hundreds of African-American families would find out after they moved their families from their homes in the south to Oklahoma, however, many African-Americans were excluded from participating in many of the land rushes. Green Gunner, though, was either well-informed or just plain lucky. Shortly after June, <clears throat> he decided to move his family to the west and take advantage of the land lotteries provided in, in the Oklahoma Territory. We know Green and Andrew, his son, arrived in Oklahoma around 1901. However, in excerpts of written documents from his youngest daughter, Mary Magdalene, she writes the family came to Oklahoma in 1903. He got in on what is known as the 1901 El Greeno Land Lottery. This lottery was the last land lottery offered in the territory of Oklahoma. Under this land grant, the lands in the Kiowa Comanche County country were to be decided by a land lottery instead of a race for claims as had been previously. Participants only had to register either in Lawton in El Reno and Green and Andrew registered in El Reno. The homesteaders were then 
determined by a drawing of an envelope which contained the person's name and address. These <coughs> envelopes were numbered as they were drawn by the land officials. Each person then had the opportunity to, to stake his claim in turn according to the number on his envelope. August 8, 1901, Green's number 283 was called and he selected and received his land. January 24, 1902, Green's number was also called and he selected an additional parcel of land and his son Andrew also selected a parcel of land adjacent to the land that uh, Green had. Over 160,000 people registered for the chance to obtain a homestead in the drawing. By 1903, Green was around 55 years of age and Mary was around 50. And they had been married for close to 40 years with most of their children marrying age. The baby Mary Magdalene was around seven. Green secured himself enough land to house his family and generations to come. There were a number of marriages that occurred in the first 10 years of the Gunter clan's arrival in Oklahoma. The 1910, 1910 census year, most of the children were living on the farm in Cattle County or within close proximity of the county. There was an exception, Laura Gunner Chavez and family were residing in Columbus, Ohio. My great grandfather and his family lived in a home adjacent to the Gunner farm and rented back to Green. A white family rented from Green lived between Joe's and Andrew Gunner's, Joe's son, who obtained his land also through the land, land grant. There were three to four families living adjacent to each other thanks to the foresight Green Gunner had in obtaining Oklahoma farmland. This photo has, it shows that he has some type of metal and we haven't been able to identify it. Um, and this is both Green and Mary. It's like out for joy. According to generational reports, Green was buried in Bridgeport, Oklahoma. Andrew Gunner was not listed among the children to receive a share of the estate per the will of Green Gunner, and we do not know why. The will has his wife, Mary, uh, receiving all the property and then the rest to the remaining 12 children, but only a dollar to Andrew. So we're still trying to figure out what that was about. <laughs> In his lifetime, Green, along with his beloved wife, raised 13 children and four grandchildren. Stories told of them seem to be centered around festivities and commotions made over holidays and birthdays. Lots of food and plenty of good times were had at the Gunner Farm in Green's day. 1920 and beyond, by 1920, Mary had been a widow, widow for two years. She remained on the Gunner Farm until her death between 1923 and 1930. This actually should be descendants of Green Gunner. This is Green's son, Joe Gunner. This is my grandfather, Garland Gunner. And this is Ina, my great, great, grandmother. And so my mother, this was my mother's father, Garland Gunner. So 1930 Caddo County Census. Joseph continued to reside in Caddo County after 1930. My great grandfather turned his farmland into a peanut farm. Joe was a member of Prince Hall Masonic Art Order he died January 22, 1966, after a prolonged illness. 
Ina was one of three children of Reverend B.F. Whitaker, a Methodist minister born in Corsicana, Texas, but raised in Oklahoma. Her father also took part in the land rush of 1889 and settled on his stake in Hinton, Oklahoma. She was united with Quail Methodist Church and was a charter member of the Eastern Star. Ida stated that the property she and Joseph owned and had received from the death of her father, she wished to sell to the current renters. She stated that there are more lots to be sold. Mr. Sparks, the treasurer, says they can sell for $50 a lot. Her father requested that one of the lots be given to the church. All property was deeded to Ina, but paperwork she received in the mail were the transaction records between her father and the treasurer. Total property, a house, and six lots. My grandfather was the son of Joseph Garland Gunn. He was born June 8, 1911 in Hinton, Oklahoma and died August 1, 1975 in Oklahoma City. He married Lovey Mitchell Good, born December 21, 1914 she died September 21, 2011. They had three children, my mother Beverly, my aunt Jacqueline, and my uncle Renoris. My husband Clinton and I have one child who is a fourth generation to Isaac and a third generation to Green, Sequoia. Green Gunner is listed on plaque number D121, and his name is inverted. It has Gunter Green, but it's AKA Green Gunner. And this concludes my presentation on my great great grandfather, Green Gunner. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we pulled the, well, my, my cousin, she actually pulled all the census reports. She pulled um, also like the application for um, social security numbers. Um, she did uh, request information on green from uh, the, the army records or the, the uh, military records. She also um, found like wills and probate documentation. <clears throat> so she did, she did a lot of the, the heavy lifting. So, but I, and I have uh, copies of those exhibits with me. You wanna see those? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, I tried to do something similar before the computer came about. It was very tedious going to the archives and trying to do a thing. My question is, did the herges.com, did that help you gain some of your information now with all this new modern technology out? Did, were you able to utilize that service? I have to just tell you, uh, Anastasia or Stacy did most of the heavy lifting. Okay. I really am the benefactor of that, um, that research. What happened in 2002, we had a family reunion okay. in Oklahoma City. And a lot of this information, Stacy had just diligently on the side just started working really for the family reunion. Mm -hmm. And it just ended up turning into a massive uh, endeavor of, and a labor of love. It was, a, she just started, it was like very passionate. Mm -hmm. So I really don't have that information. Mm -hmm. I do know that um, in preparing for um, the family tree project and this project, we actually were able to go into, um, you know, I, I just Google a lot of the information on the 119th um, Company K. Mm -hmm. And then there were several links to pull some of that information up. And again, I also Google Camp Nelson information. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very helpful. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.